Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at another data type. So in the previous videos we covered using strings or sequence of characters. We also covered numbers, negative numbers, and floating point numbers, which are just a fancy way of saying decimal points. Uh, we did all of this doing some conversions to make everything print out nicely to the screen or display nicely. In this one what we want to do is we want to uh, move on to one of the most important topics, although it has the fewest nuances to it, uh, which is going to be, if you can believe it, uh, the concept of true or false. Now, every language is going to have some variation of these, as, at least as far as I'm aware. Now, they're usually going to call these Booleans. So we can say like Booleans are uh, either true or false. What we mean by this is, let's say you have like a, um, I don't know, a person, a person who is uh, able to drive, right? Person is able to drive, set this equal to true. This isn't exactly how we would do it, but we could say like, um, in our application, our program, we validate whether or not someone can drive. If they can drive, we set this to true. If they can't drive, we set this uh, to false. Or in this case, it's talking about something that's probably not monetization friendly. So we'll just say uh, unable to drive is equal to false. Now, for the most part, this is one of those topics where we can talk about it now. I can show you that these things exist, but it's really not going to be useful until we have some way of saying like if uh, the person can drive, um, then let them drive, right? Or we could say like, I don't know, uh, if the person can drive, then puts you can drive, right? Like we had that before where we did the puts to print stuff out to the screen. And we can see here we're getting red squiggly lines. So maybe we should replace this with the variable name here uh, just to see, uh, you know, something that makes a bit more sense. Now you're going to see here, this isn't working, right? Although weirdly enough, if we put the keyword end after this, it's now kind of working, right? So if the person is able to drive, if this is true, which it is, then it'll puts this to the screen. So if we now go ahead and run this code, you can see you can drive. So how does this work? Well, when we use a Boolean, we're usually going to have something to this effect in any language. This will vary depending on the language you're looking at. Like if you're looking at, uh, I don't know, JavaScript, you'd say like if um, person is able to drive and then we would have, uh, this is my formatter is going to hate this, but we can do something like this. We can say console.log, you can drive, right? Uh, in another language like uh, Java, you would have something very similar. Uh, except there'd be a bunch more boilerplate here. So instead of console.log, it would be like system.out.print line you can drive. Uh, and of course, we need the semicolon at the end of these. Uh, if you're working in other languages, you know, it'll vary. Like Python will be if person is able to drive colon, and then you would have print you can drive. It's always going to vary depending on the language. Ruby, this is just one way of doing it. We can, of course, do something similar to these. It's just going to vary a bit. And that's something that I want to cover later, uh, just because right now it seems like it's a bit overkill. So what it will instead do is we'll say if the person is unable to drive, unable to drive, then we'll say you can't drive, right? Go ahead and press the play button. We can see you can drive prints out and that's it. Why doesn't you can't drive print out? Well, because this only works if this is true, which it's not. So we need another way to handle it. And that's where we'll start moving into what's called like conditional branching in the future. But the reason why this is so good is because sometimes, you know, it's going to be a little bit less contrived than this uh, pretty much all the time, actually. Uh, but sometimes you have some logic that you want to, you know, check if, if it's true or not. And if it is, you get back these like absolute values that are treated the same way like the number three is, right? We know three is always three. It will never not be three. I can't say 
three is equal to four somewhere. Uh, this is just nonsense. Probably don't want to do that. In the same way, I can't say true is equal to, I don't know, uh, the conspiracy theory, right? Like I can't just say my conspiracy theory is, is inherently true. Uh, that doesn't work. So we always know true will be this, which means we can always check if something is true. We can also always check if something is false because these are like just at the language level in Ruby. These are these are like established constant things that don't change. So if we want to do something like let's say we have a uh, like a I don't know, driving age we need to check for, we have a uh, person's age is equal to, I don't know, 24. Then we can say if the person's, and this is going to be a little bit more advanced, but we'll get into this later. If the person's age is greater than uh, or equal to 18, I guess, we can put you can drive. If it's not, we'll use the else keyword here. We'll put you can't drive. And now if we press play on this or if we run it in our console over here, we'll see you can drive appears because the person is 24. But if I change this to four, and then I run this, you'll see you can't drive appears because what happens here is this gets evaluated in the same way when we had our X equals one and our Y equals two, we did our Z equals X plus Y. What we're doing here is we're just saying, evaluate these variables in the same way we used the plus between the X and the Y. Here we're doing the greater than or equals, which is just saying if the person's age is greater than or equal to 18, which we'll just check down here, I'll move this back up to 24. So we're now making sure 24 is bigger than 18. So we'll say like the result is equal to person's age is bigger than 18. If the person's age is bigger than 18, which it is because it's 24 in this case, the result then becomes just the word true. And then this just becomes if true, you can drive, which is why when we have 24, we check if this, if this thing is true, which it is, we then get you can drive. And you can see right here, I can just leave the word true here. And if I now run this, it'll just say you can drive. I can also change this to if false, run it again, it'll say you can't drive. Because in this case, I'm just literally putting the number in there. It's the same way if I just literally put a, a 34 in for X, X is then 34. I can just put in a true or a false here for this if, and it'll just, it'll work off of that. This is, this is gonna be a little bit more advanced than the other stuff we've covered for now, so I wouldn't worry about this too much, but the one thing I want you to take away from this is that Booleans are either true or false. They're just, they just are true or false. You can have a conditional statement, you can have some logic that checks whether or not something is true or false, and what that result is, is going to be a Boolean. So when you hear the word Boolean, I know it's it's ridiculous that we come up with these words, but it just means like a true or false thing. Don't worry about the terminology being super scary. That's all we're really worried about is just, is this thing true or is this thing not true? But of course we can't just say not true. So instead we have to say false. That's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully I didn't scare you off with this uh, scary block of code, but uh, assuming I didn't, then I guess I'll see you in the next one.